Greetings. God's blessing to you. I'm grateful to come back before you to see you again and for you to see me and to know that we have um, a God who sees, El Elyon, the God who sees. And he sees all the things that we're going through in this hour across the world. Now, and, and he sees the things that you can, are concerned about. Here in America, we're very concerned about the, the high prices uh, of inflation that's going up, um, thinning grocery sh store shelves, Think products that we've always been able to find is no longer there. I, I love uh, a particular type of uh, spaghetti sauce mix. It looks like it looks like it's gone forever. I, I I can't find it anywhere, and and just things that we are normally used to finding. You go into the store and it just may not be there, or if it is there, the price is so expensive. I love grapes, and <laughs> I've gone to the store twice and not been able to find grapes, red grapes. Not there. In fact, there was no grapes. And so we're looking at a time that we've never seen. We've never seen lack, but we have been warned that this time is coming from God's word, but also from the prophets who have said that we will be experiencing uh, lack of food or lack of products that we, are normally, we normally get. Um, God never expected us to become fearful at what we don't have or feel for, fearful that the things that we, the life that we had before is gone, because that's not really what we should be focused on. If we have watched the, 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 the signs of the times in any kind of way, then we know that times are looking just like what the word of God said it's going to look like at the very end. And we are at that time. And it's okay because we know that the end of the game is all good. We know that. But we have to get through these seasons, these next couple of years that we have to go through. Maybe it's a couple of years. But we were even watching uh, threats of, of war, uh, uh, whether they want to call them uh, ex uh, uh, war exercises or whatever. We're watching uh, over in, in Europe things begin to... to uh, get crunked up with the military, but we we send military to to these different places too. And you know we're all wondering, are we going to go into war? You know all these things. God says, don't worry about it. There are people who are so concerned about their lifestyle changing, and I'm speaking of those who love to live the high life. You know they want to party and and look at well, what can I do? I want to go on a cruise. I want to do this. I want to do that. And they're so worried. It is about the lust of the flesh too, that we watch. People are so concerned about this little body that we have. People are so concerned about how we're going to dress it. How is it going to look nice? How much flesh can I show? How important am I? Do am I pretty? Do I do I look pretty to people? Is my hair set straight? Is my makeup right? Uh, and my eyelashes looking okay? You know, uh, everything that really doesn't matter. It's fine to look your best. God wants us to just, you know, be the best you can be, but not to become consumed with your own flesh, the lust of the flesh. I want to fulfill my flesh in any kind of way. I want to satisfy my flesh. It's all about me. It's, I mean, you know, we've never seen narcissism like we see it now. I am just appalled at how um, life is now, even taking airplanes. You know, taking a plane used to be a, a privilege. And it was something that, you know, you wore, not not, not your best, but you, you dressed up to get on a plane. You know, you dressed your nice that's nice in business attire to take a flight. And, and people were concerned about their behavior at airports. And, and, and everything has flipped in these past couple of years. Everything has flipped to now. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's contention on the flights. We're not sure if you take a flight, if you have a layover somewhere, you got to stop. You know, you got like a one-stop or two-stop flight. Are you going to get to your destination? Because if somebody act up, act up on the flight that you're on and you have another destination, you may not get it because they might have to turn that flight back around or land it somewhere or either tell everybody to get off the flight before you even leave the airport. It is so difficult. We are talking about the mental illnesses out here, 
drug addiction, everything. But we're not supposed to be caught up in the things of this world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, what do we see? Do we need everything we see? As Americans, we are so uh, used to uh, window shopping, you know, or just, you know, buying whatever you want. You know, it's not, the, it's, it's not what you can afford. It's, it's what you want. It's what you feel everybody else wants. And people are running after things they cannot afford, high-priced products, the lust of the eyes. If I see it, I want it. I'm coveting. I'm coveting everything. And so we have to be careful how we walk and how we live in this season. And the pride of life. Oh, I am so tired of that evil spirit called pride. There's so many people that's caught up in it. And you know, the bad thing about it, I think people who are full of pride don't even know that it's wrong. They wear it like a badge. God never intended for us to be full of pride and, and, and you know, I'm going to let you know who I am, you know, and, and all this. Want it to be known, want it to be famous. People are doing some of the craziest things to get likes on their videos. When I say crazy, I'm saying dangerous things. I, I was looking at um, a video once and these it said how many people have died at the Grand Canyon. And I, I just came back from the Grand Canyon a few months ago. And it is just an all, absolutely all, all inspiring sight to see. It is absolutely beautiful and it's enticing. And you want to, everybody kind of want to get to the edge. I mean, even me, like, let me just see, let me get a better look. Because your, your eyes just can't believe what you're seeing. It's so incredibly beautiful. But it is, it's a very dangerous spot. And so you have those that want to go all the way to the edge and sit. And, I, you know, our tour guide warned us. This. He said, you know, uh, be careful going to the, to the edge and how many people have fallen off the edge. Because when they would get up, they would get dizzy and lose their balance. And and I, I can I can definitely understand that, but it is so beautiful. I understand they're doing it, but but some people are doing it because they just want to get a that really good shot, so they can post their videos, and they might not have gotten a shot. But somebody else got a shot of them going down. Be careful, you know. People are doing all kinds of ridiculous stunts. Some guy recently uh, uh cr deliberately crashed his plane. And parachuted out of his plane before it crashed so he could get, get all these likes. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Everything is about what's going on around us. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But God never ordained for us to just put our thoughts, our focus, our heart, our feelings into this realm like that. That we got to go after the goal, go after, oh, how much money, 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 money. How much money can I get? Do everything you can to get money out of people. Because we don't understand the simplicity of living a life in Jesus Christ. And it is all good if you really understand the plan. The plan is awesome. I want to start off with this one scripture. And this is... I'm not scripture, scriptures. Hebrews 10. I love Hebrews. Hebrews 10, verse 22. And I'm going to read this. Let us come into God's presence with confidence and full assurance of faith, rooted in him, cleansed from a guilty conscience. Now, first of all, we come, we come before his presence with confidence, with a full assurance that God knows we're there. He'd always do. Sometimes you may not feel it. But when we enter God's presence, we do it with full assurance and with the faith of knowing that we have connected with the Most High God. And then it says, cleanse from a guilty conscience. So many times I've talked to people that they go, they say, well, I just really can't get into it when I'm trying to pray because every time I pray and I try to get before God, then I began to think about all the things I did that I knew was not pleasing to God. And I said, that is just the enemy. That's the enemy trying to steal from you what God already have provided for you. Yeah. So if you come before God and you feel guilty, just ask God to forgive you. Shut the guilt out because you need to come with a full assurance knowing and with the confidence of knowing that God hears you. God sees you 
El Elyon. He sees you. You come before him with that assurance, not being concerned about, well, I did this or I did that. You, you, you have. Ask for forgiveness. God loves a repentant heart, a clean heart. It says, from a, uh, and cleanse from a guilty conscience by the blood of Christ. That's what you got to remember. By the blood of Christ and wash clean by baptism from the filth of this world. We were washed clean from the filth of this world through baptism. We stand before a holy God knowing that God hears us because he cares for us. Let's hold firmly without wavering to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. God initiated his promise and would do for us everything he has promised to do. We have to understand and remember that we can't come before him wavering. Wavering. We can't come before God with with with, with, with double with being a double minded person. We come before him with the full full assurance that he hears, and he listens. He knows and he sees. Come before him just like you would come before an earthly father. And you know, I know sometimes it's difficult for people to really understand that because there might have been a problem between in their in their childhood between their, their uh, with their father or they didn't have a father in the home or you know they may not have had a father who was mature enough to know what it meant to be one so they have a problem kind of understanding what does it mean to stand before God with the full assurance and confidence God said he would be a father to the fatherless and a mother to the motherless it does not matter what happened in your natural life your physical life but when you come before the great creator, God, he sees, he hears, and he listens, and he answers. He is not a man that he should lie. He is God, and he's calling us right now in, in this time of, of great global chaos. Come on, seek me, and you shall find me, he says. When you search for me with all of your heart, you will find God. He said, I will be found by you. Isn't that beautiful? God wants to be found by you. He wants you to seek him out. Not, not how the world seeks him. Well, give me, give me, give me type of God. No, not give me things. You know, when we really understand what it is to rest in the full assurance of the love and the confidence of God knowing that he hears us, knowing that we belong to him, knowing that all those promises that he made are yea and amen. Do you know God will give you the desires of your heart? And with some of us, we may get the desire, the desires of our heart. And we, you know, he blesses us with what, with, like he said, he blesses our mouth with good things. He blesses us. But God also said for some, you will have suffering. Every time there's a turn, there might be suffering. But, you know, we're not concerned about that because we know that God is still with us. He said, when you go through the fire, I'm with you. When you go through the flood, I'm with you. When you go through the high waters, I'm with you. I am God. I am God, he says. And there is none like me. I want to encourage you today in these hours of darkness when they moved the doomsday clock even closer to 12. Are we concerned? Is that doomsday for us? Not at all. He says, when you see all these things happening on the earth, look up for your redemption draws nigh. We know this. So we can't operate like we don't know the truth or we don't have the, the, the promises of God. It says here too, so let's, so, so let's be compassionate. And give some thought to how we can spur each other on to love and good deeds. That's what I'm trying to do. Come on, we can do this thing. We're overcomers. We're going, we are going to give a testimony that's out of this world, every last one of us. We all have a testimony to give. And we will give a testimony that no man can give. You have a testimony from God through the test that you suffered and the mess that you went through and the deliverance of God that you can help people who are going through the same thing. That's why you went through. God comforts us so we can comfort others. So your test is your testimony and your mess 
is your message. And God takes the pain away. You understand that? This is why so many people that we see who don't have hope, they feel all is lost. They, they, they don't want to go on because they don't understand that there will be another day and the sun will come up the next day. And whatever you lost today does not mean you won't regain in the future. But even if you don't get, regain back physical things, God's love is always there for all of us. I pray for some of you who are caught in the, in the, in the chains of depression. I, I know that is a hard and a very dark place. And that's not the place that God have for you. And I know you may feel life is hopeless. I can't go on. You know, I'm having a hard time. Things are not working out like I wanted them to work out in my life. I, I, I've, I've served God. I've been a, a, um, a believer and a follower of him. I have preached his word or I've talked to other people to encourage them. I've helped the poor. I have touched the weak. I've prayed for the sick. And I'm going through this terrible, terrible place right now. God sees and God will deliver. Sometimes he'll allow us to go through these things. Like I said, so that when we see someone else go through them, we can get with those people and say, look, I've been there. I, I, I have, I've been in that place. And, and this is how it's probably going to work out. This is probably some of the things that you're going to feel or some of the things that you're going to go through. But at the end, God will show you why you had to go through it. I don't mean the end of your life. I mean the end of the trial. You know, Job went through probably one of the worst trials anybody could go through. He lost everything and seven children. And and all of that, plus his health went down. I mean, he lost everything. And the thing about it, you know, at the very end, he had three friends that came before the end. He had three friends that came and sat with him. And, and his three friends were trying to figure out, Joe, why are you going through this stuff? I mean, why is this happening to you? And, and, and they were trying to give him reasons. You know, maybe you didn't do something right, you know, trying to give him these reasons why he's going through this trial. It was none of that. God called Job a righteous man. But at the end, God restored his health. God restored his children. God restored him all of his 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 uh, stocks and, you know, his livestock and homes. Everything that he had, God multiplied it. So what I want you to think about right now, it might seem dark to you right now. It might seem that the losses that you have accept, have gone through, that life will never be the same. Oh, but it will be better. You know, we, we have this slogan here in America, build back better. Can't nobody do it like God can do it. Can't nobody do you like Jesus can do you. Jesus truly can build back better. And he will. And he will make you into a person who is strong and who is solid in him. And he take away the pain. He takes away the pain. He give you peace. Now, this peace that God gives is not the little temporary peace that we get sometimes. You think, oh, well, how would I ever have peace again? I don't think I could ever feel good again. Oh, but you can and you will. Because the peace that comes from God is not natural peace. It's supernatural. And he sprinkles that thing with anointing. It's the peace that transcends or is above all human understanding. I want you to understand that it won't always be like this. You don't have to look at the dark side. Praise yourself out of this. You say, how can I praise? I feel so bad. Just put the music on. Put some music on and ask God, Father, draw me. But here's what he really says for you to draw close to him. But I'll get there in a minute. So we're to spur each other on with love and with good deeds. Let me help each other. Love each other. Do good to each other. Be a blessing to one another. Don't just see somebody hurting and you can't call or text. And I understand some people are very private. And when they're going through hard times, they really don't want to talk to anybody. 
And, and for those people, you pray for them. Just pray for them. They don't have to know if you're doing it. God knows. Just pray for them. But don't just sit back and do nothing. Prayer is so powerful. Prayer will bring them out of anything. I mean, I don't care how low you are. When someone else begins to intercede for a person that's going through, it, it works. God turns things around. I know he do. I know God like that. And then it says here, verse 25, don't give up the habit of worshiping together as some have already done. So, you know, there are so many people, so many churches that are closing and, 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 and some have gone on Zoom. But there are those who have pulled themselves completely away from church where they're not interacting with human beings. Even on Zoom, you're interacting with human beings. But if you're just looking at a, a church on uh, like on video and, and, and you're not speaking to anyone, there's no conversation, there's no camaraderie. How are you fellowshipping together? It has to be fellowshipped together. Where if you can't touch, at least you can see someone that you know, you can talk to and encourage each other. You know, I, I love Zoom. Zoom goes all across the world. And you can come into contact and worship and pray with anybody anywhere in this world. It is such a beautiful medium. But it says, and to do this, it says, but encourage each other more and more as you see the day approaching. What day? The day that everything goes down. We, we, we're watching this thing. But we also know the day for us is when Jesus appears. We know. That's why we watch it. Watch and pray. Watch the signs. Watch everything that you see. Not to be fearful. Jesus says, watch and pray. You see what's happening in the, in the world. Now pray about it. Pray for those who are in, in, in different areas, in different countries where there's, there's war or discord or uh, uh, conflict. Pray for the people there, the innocent people who are living under that. Pray for these people who live in these areas where there are volcanoes and uh, uh, ashes covering the house. Pray for people who are living in hard places. Pray. That's what you, that's your job. Pray for them. Jesus said, pray for one another, not just those in your household. I'm going to turn to Galatians 5. Galatians 5 and 6. Well, I'm going to go with uh, Galatians 5. Let me get them on Galatians 4. Hold up for one second. Galatians 5. Um, I want to go right here. For 15. If you keep on snapping and snarling at each other, you'll end up destroying one another. Oh my goodness, there's so many families that's, that are broken. So much has happened in these, these, two, these couple of years. And if, if you keep this up, you would devour one another. Nobody wins. No one. Families, do what you can do to restore your families. Pray for your families. Pray, encourage your family. Hey, let's pray together. A family that prays together stays together. I promise you, they really will. I've seen what happens when families stop praying and I watch the enemy come in like a, like a flood. But the Bible says, but the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And so that's that, that the spirit of the Lord moves in when you pray, pray verse 16, let the Holy spirit direct your lives and you won't care about satisfying the desires of your sinful nature. Watch what goes into your eye gates. Watch, watch, watch what comes in here. You can't look at everything and think you're going to be okay. Nah, you can't look at everything. There, there, is, there is stuff on TV now that just completely destroys my soul. Feel like it's just like, ooh, I can't look at that. I don't want to see it. Do your stuff in the bedroom. But everything is up front to destroy the innocence of children and the cause of those to, to lust if you let yourself be entertained by that. That's part of the lust of the eyes. Pull yourself out of that place. And then it says, verse 17, the desires of our human nature and the, and the desires of the Holy Spirit are not the same thing. They're not. 
They are like two powerful forces pulling in opposite directions. So you can't always depend on what you feel as being the right thing to do. You cannot depend on the flesh. You cannot depend on your emotions. You have to overcome your emotions that are, no, learn how to control your emotions. Overcome those areas that you find yourself weak in. If you're easily offended, begin to deal with your own selves. Get those scriptures that talk about offense. Get those scriptures that talk about pride. Sometimes you're easily offended because there's some pride, pride stuff going on there. So you want to get rid of these things and make sure that there's no open door for Satan to come in and cause problems in your family. But if the Holy Spirit is leading you, you won't be led or led to depend on keeping the, the law as a means of salvation. You know, <clears throat> we don't need a law to tell us how to love. Israel didn't have the Holy Spirit. The nation of Israel in the Bible, the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They had the law. God dealt with men. In the case of Deborah and Esther, God dealt with with, with, with human beings and he placed his spirit on those human beings as prophets and gave them a word to tell the other people but the people themselves did not have the Holy Spirit they had the law all they had to do was obey just obey the law but after Jesus he sent the Holy Spirit I must go and I'll send the comforter so I don't need a law to say what law is it okay, uh, uh, thou shalt not lie Thou shalt not steal. I don't need that. I have the Holy Spirit. I already know I'm being led by him. I don't have to touch it. I don't even want to lust after it. Lust of the eyes again. I don't have to touch it. Lust of the flesh. Looking at someone's mate or looking at a woman or man in a way that is lustful. You don't have to have a law to tell you that because the law is written on our heart now. And we walk according to the dictates of that law. I want you to think about the time we're in. I want you to draw near to God because he said he'll draw near you. Draw near to him. Be close to God. Hear his word. Listen to his voice and be blessed in this season. And this season, what season am I speaking of right now? Be blessed in the now. Now, two to five seconds. Be blessed in the now. Amen. I love you. And God bless you. Amen.